Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please abiding by the Plus we're having good runs, but it's a slow start, let's not get too braggadocious. Yo, excuse me, NH60 Egim, which is the sound that I made when I saw that we had one HP and data miner. However, yo, this could be a library. However, pretty stoked that we got Eden's Blessing, and I gotta say, is this the return of the Zane? I received a letter. Okay, and I did fan mail the other day. Um, and, of course, you know, there's no way to say that without being, like, making it seem like I'm some kind of big shot. Not the case. Just this weirdo who's not that good at a video game. But thank you, graciously, for the letters, and the gifts, even the Kiati Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> which at this point border on insanity and if anyone ever you know if we died suddenly of like carbon monoxide poisoning and people came into our apartment they would be like well he died doing what he loved collecting weird action figures of the second tier characters from the Star Wars franchise particularly the prequels um, but anyway someone said to me they said hey data miners an underrated item I very, very heartily disagree. However, I can't deny, at the cost of just a little bit of speed, we did just pick up quite a lot of damage. Are we willing to roll again? I'm going to level with you. No. Not at all. <laughs> Bombs, please. Oh, let's go. We were actually just given a golden gift. And what was that golden gift? An effective data miner, a feel-good anecdote, and an opportunity to pretend that I'm actually a person of some importance by receiving fan mail, which stands for fandibular. Um, small rock, also great. Speed down, not so much. But dude, 5 rate of fire, 5.4 damage is unbelievably good. Sorry, were you a key beggar? You are a key beggar. Why wouldn't I play you? Well, because most of the time... We don't have 99 keys on the first floor, so it's kind of an acceptable shortcut. Am I willing? Sure. I mean, I already did it, so hard to say no. Two I'm Drowsies. I mean, I could actually use I'm Drowsy if we're fighting a, a horrible enemy. This is totally fine. Um, and what did we have? Finger bone? I think we're going to take Swallowed Penny for now. The idea being we have a decent chance at an arcade. So I, I think I'm going to cool it, and I'm going to say, you know what? Data Miner, you did us a great service. I, I'm worried. I, th I think it's like being at the casino. I've sworn off the casino that is Data Miner. And you know what? I've realized maybe it's okay to go to the casino that is Data Miner and just bring what you're willing to lose. You know? If we're willing to play once and then be like, that's enough, so be it. But... We win if we roll for the first time and are happy with what we get and walk out. And that's pretty much what I'm doing right here. So, you know what? Turns out, maybe Data Miner, you know, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Just because we can't use it all the time doesn't mean in moderation it can't be worth something. Alright, I've decided I'm, like, completely for it. I'm gonna say, you know, honestly, it's the best item in the friggin' game. Why would I ever want an item except for Data Miner? You'd have to be some kind of idiot. I want to marry Data Miner. Okay, I just wanted to see, you know, how far we could reasonably push the envelope. Ruka. A meow is not a good way to get into this office. Because a meow makes me think... I think we want High Priestess. A meow makes me think you want to... you're excited. You know, you're you're bored, and you're like, I want to play. We can play. I can play with the best of them. I'm playing a video game right now as we speak. I'm a gamer. Who knows play better than me? But I can't do it right now. We got to wait temporarily. So I could open the door. I can hear him. And you can come on in. But you better get in that box and go to sleep for a bit. This doesn't look like a cat who wants to get in a box. 
Don't do it. Don't do it, you son of a gun. Okay, sure. You can be on my lap until you bite my hand, and then I'm going to kick you off. Oh, be careful. All right, this run right now is one speed upgrade away from being heads and tails above where it needs to be. Monstro gets high priestess. Ooh, it hit both of them. Beautiful. A speed upgrade. Couldn't have planned it any better myself, except I probably would have made the deal with the devil a little bit better, to be honest. But, uh, oh well. Still pretty good. And we do have deal with the angel potential now. It's been a very angel, or angelic, I guess I should say, day. One bomb? Nah. I'm not even going to play our, uh... Actually, you know what? We should play. Because who knows play better than me, right, Ruka? Can I entertain? He's on my lap right now. I'm just going to bounce my knees. Maybe that's enough play? No, he hates it. <laughs> well, 14 cents. I'm drowsy. I... You know, this cat's a... Wonderful creature. Brings a lot of joy to my life. Love him like a human being. Lay down my life for him. Maybe. I don't know. I know that sound. That maybe sounds like very suspect there, but like, I don't know. I might. Would I run into my apartment if it was on fire to save this cat? Absolutely. I would at least give it a shot. Would I, you know, jump in front of a bullet? I don't know if I have that kind of superhuman uh, reaction speed, to be honest. Give me that compass. But sometimes you just got to wonder. You know? Like, right now, he rested the entire weight of his body on his throat and rested his throat on my wrist. And then he got uncomfortable after, like, ten seconds and looked at me like, Hey, why'd you do that? Why did I do what? Why did I do what? It was you. I think... It you know, Ruka is like... Uh, Tomo's a cat. Ruka's like an agent provocateur. You know, his whole existence is just like, is creating situations that are noteworthy. He's just like, yeah, I know I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it. You're not going to let me do this? Okay, well, you know, what did I expect? I just, he just wants to be significant. He wants to be like the most important part of the room. I understand the expression, curiosity killed the cat. No, you, you can't sit there. That's where my Twitch branded pint glass full of filtered water sits. You can't, you can't sit there. That's where my water is. First off, you can't be on my desk anyway, because then your cat hair gets in my nose. And then it gets in the keyboard, and it's a whole thing. Yo, can I tell you, this is a very Northern Lion-y anecdote. I have a bad habit. I had a bad habit. I used to brush my teeth anywhere but the bathroom. Brush my teeth in my office, brush my teeth in the bedroom, walk around, brush my teeth, you know. Why is this a bad habit? Because you get, you know, even if you think you're not getting toothpaste everywhere, if you look at it in aggregate, you're getting toothpaste everywhere. One of the things my wife got me for my birthday was a Sonicare toothbrush. On recommendation, excuse me, cat, you can't be there for the 200th time, my son. You must be in the box with your brother. You like the box. What are you complaining about? You crazy boy. Anyway. Uh, it was a Sonicare toothbrush. One of the reasons we got it is that my sister-in-law is a dentist. And she was like, yo... If you guys want to improve your dental hygiene, like, easily... Not a sponsor, by the way. Get a Sonicare toothbrush. Like, I see... You know, we use a Sonicare and, you know, the difference between... Uh, my patients that use a Sonicare and my patients that use a manual toothbrush, even the ones that brush well, uh, is, is market. So, if you're invested in your mental... Or, not mental health. Your dental health. You should get a Sonicare. So, we said, you know what? We got no excuse not to get a Sonicare. There are good excuses not to get one, but we don't have them. So we um, got the Sonicare, and not only does my mouth feel cleaner than it's ever felt in its entire life, but because it creates so much spray, I have to brush my teeth in the bathroom. It's, it, it got two birds stoned at once for me. 
And I know it seems like a weird recommendation. I'm not saying, yo, if you got the same problem I have, you know, drop 80 bucks on this electric toothbrush. What I am saying, though, is it worked for me. <laughs> so if anybody out there, you know, lives with somebody that's got a bad habit of brushing their teeth outside of the places where they should brush their teeth, well, first off, I mean, they should just stop it. But secondarily, you know, you, you can trick them into stopping it. Although, I will say, you also run the risk. If they're going to keep brushing their teeth with the electric toothbrush outside of the bathroom, it's going to get real messy. So, that's not a threat. That's a promise. Things got a little scary back in this room. Um, but, I mean, ooh, two luck upgrades. We have... Uh, Blue Baby, or we have the Ankh, I should say, so even if we die, what do we care? You know, we come back as Blue Baby. Not ideal. What would be ideal would be to get a deal with the Devil slash Angel here somewhere. But we'll see if we can make it happen. Run's still great regardless. Plus, we get another item next run, which is even better. Nothing makes me want to record one more Isaac episode than getting Eden's Blessing. You know? I am a fool. Anyway, again, not an endorsement of Sonicare. Although I will say, Malph also, and I, like, it's rare for me to feel this good about a purchase. But uh, Malph was like, I told him we got a Sonicare because that's what 30 year old friends talk about. And then he was like, he said, Hells yeah, brother. My dentist was always telling me to get a Sonicare. And then one day I bought one and I started brushing with it and I didn't tell her when I went back to the dentist and she was like, Michael, your teeth look so good. And then he, he said, hells yeah, brother, I'm on that Sonicare. And she was like, I knew it. So I feel like everybody that's using this toothbrush is like, they got a, they got a good story. Now, is it a very pedestrian story? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not regaling you with all the stories of the times, you know, in college, I drank one too many beers I had to, you know, poop in a public toilet that I then fell asleep on. All right? Those stories are unbecoming of a professional in today's modern workaday world. So, the coupon. Dude, now we're cooking. I avoid telling you those stories. Um, well, first off, they're a long time ago. A long time in the distant past. Secondarily, oh, let me go. Um... And I've said this before. I I want to, you know, if you're watching these, you know, I know that, you, especially if you're a little younger, you, you kind of look to... Man, this is a terrible get here. Let me see what we got first. Telepills? Are you a wizard? Puberty's fine. Oh, well. We'll, we'll leave and use telepills to try to extend the... Uh, or, you know, short-circuit the floor here. Get to a good room faster. This is our third XL Depths in a row. And I know because I've recorded the last episodes all back-to-back -back and they were all quick enough to keep that stuff in the mental cache. But, like, genuinely, you know, I know you look to these episodes... Or not. I'm not going to say you look to me as a role model because that's not right. What I will say is I think if you consume a lot of my media, you can't help but look to me as kind of like a, an influence for... You know, what you're going to act like if you're younger than me and you get to be my age. If that makes sense. I, I don't think that's uh, even close to a, a sentence that feels like it's bragging. You know, it's the same way, you know, when I was, I, I was an only child. So between the ages of like, you know, 10 and 14. You know, what did I base my idea of what high school was going to be like on? Uh, Saved by the Bell. Smart guy. You know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, etc., etc. You know, whatever kind of media you got is going to form some of the foundation of the way that you interface with uh, you interface with your life, to some extent. And that's why, like, you know, I would I'm not saying that anybody's beyond their purview to be doing stuff like this, but some streamers are like, hey, we're going to do a drunk stream tonight, and I want all my viewers to get hammered with me. And I'm like, cool. I'll be over here talking about how I read a book. I don't think there's anything wrong with partaking in adult beverages. Making a habit of doing it while being sedentary for hours and hours every week. Might be deleterious. I don't want to 
You know, I, I recognize because I, I, I hang out on Twitch chats sometimes. Less than I used to earlier this year, but still, you know, time and time again. I'm not calling anybody out, but I'm like, you know, certain percentage of Twitch chat is drunk when they're in or, or otherwise under the influence of something. And I, I take no, uh, again, no judgment there. What you do when you're off time is, you know, your time to work with. However, and I'm not saying I don't engage in any of this stuff. However, I don't want to do it when I'm working. Because if you decide that you have a problem with one of those uh, substances, perhaps, I don't want you to be like, you know, well, my favorite streamer is doing it. So that normalizes the behavior, if that makes sense. Similarly, you know, if anything, you know, maybe you're 19, 20, 21, 22, etc., 45. Uh, I don't want you sitting in my chat and thinking that I am encouraging you to sit still and drink all night. If that makes sense. This might sound like I'm being judgmental. I'm not. I'm judging the habit, not the person. So, you know, I've had some wilder days in my life. And, uh, I mean, not to the extent that, like, you know, not Scott Weiland level. Which probably should come up with another reference for that joke as he has, you know, passed away. But, you know, it holds true. I had some wilder days, but I don't want to necessarily broadcast them, those and give the idea that it, you know, that's the way you should be living your life, if that makes any sense. Which is why I'm never embarrassed when people suggest, you know, oh, NL, you work too much, you know, you also go to school, you also, uh, you know, you're always talking about reading books and watching Jeopardy. You know, those are healthy habits. If I have an unhealthy day... It's not that I'm trying to hide it, it's more I, you know, I don't want to normalize the idea that that should be done on the regular. Now, I'm not a teetotaler by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying, you know, I think about stuff like this. I think, I don't know, because I've been doing it so long. I hope it doesn't come across as too judgmental. But that's why you get the stories about the Sonic Care toothbrush. <laughs> Now, if you play your cards right now and then, you might hear a story from the salad days of my youth. Every now and then, but, you know, I couch it in the idea that, I don't know. If you're watching me, I want you to know that I want you to be the best person that you can be. I don't, if, if being the best person that you can be means that you got less time to hang out and watch my content, bad for me, I'm not going to say good for you. But, you know, if you're consuming a more healthy amount of content, good for you. I'm happy when you're happy. But if too many of you get happy, I will have to go work at Save On Foods. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm late enough in my life that, you know, it will be hard for me to rise to assistant manager. So I'm just saying, like, don't get too ahead of yourself. Like, try to limit your own success to some extent, please, if possible. I think about that from time to time. I do, and we're getting into like some real, uh, some real talk to some extent. But I do think about that, and that's, to be honest, one of the reasons I don't have, I don't encourage donations. And one of the reasons, like in general, if you watch, you know, on Twitch, the the NLSS and, and the way that I stream is different than a, the way that a lot of people stream, where they immediately shout out all sorts of financial support. And sometimes it has people accuse me of being ungrateful when there's something like a donation or a cheer or what have you. It's not the case. It's just a, a fine line, in my opinion, between, you know, appreciation and encouraging someone to be reckless with their resources, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I, maybe other people are different. Not everybody's like this. And I, I mean, not everybody's different. To be honest, you know, I've had discussions with other streamers about it. Somebody gives you, like, a, a donation that feels very sizable. I'm talking even, like, 25 bucks. You know, you... You get to this... I, I, the first thing I think of is not, like, yo, sick, free dinner. The first thing I think of is, like, there's a little feeling in the pit of my stomach that's, like, I hope that this person is of sound mind right now. You know, I hope they're not sad i hope they're not uh 
you know, intoxicated, any variety of compromised mental state, you know? Because I still feel weird about it, and I think part of it is just, I don't know if younger streamers feel the same way. Dude, we gotta take Awaz into boss rush. But, I do, it is like genuinely, it's not me trying to push the image of being sensitive to these concerns. It's the reason like, when someone, if someone donates, they let's say they cheer, and it's like 10 bucks. I'll be like, thank you. And then if they do it again, I go, hey, thanks, are you okay? <laughs> so they, immediately I'm like, you know, here's the thing. If you're going to keep uh, cheering as long as I say thank you, I'm going to stop saying thank you. Not because I'm ungrateful, but because I don't want to be the sole reason that you're, you know, not going to be able to buy groceries. Or you're going to wake up in the morning and, you know, have to explain to your, your wife or girlfriend or what have you that, you know, you dropped 200 bucks on a Twitch streamer because he told a joke you liked. And if, you're, if you can do that in a healthy way... It's amazing. I think we are going to take Papula Duplex here. Out of all these items, why Papula Duplex? Well, because it makes our tears look funny. I'm not saying you shouldn't donate to streamers. I'm just saying I'm always of the, you know, the, my first reaction is like, oh no. <laughs> what went wrong? And maybe I'm being overly sensitive and maybe I'm not. I don't know. Anyway. I don't think I'm the... Oh, almost. Oh, he tries to be a good influence. Almost shattered a glass in anger because someone gave him ten bucks. Okay, look. You took that all out of context, okay? I think you're willfully arguing in bad faith, to be honest. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. If you do it in a way that's, that's comfortable and sustainable for you. I just don't want... I, I mean, I know what buyer's remorse feels like, you know? I bought James Bond 007 for the Game Boy when I was uh, like 10 years old. Couldn't figure out how to get past the first level. I cried because I spent like uh, two months allowance on this game. Turns out you got to... the fa I don't know where game developers get off, okay? The first level, you got to press B to examine secret walls. And then there's a hammer located in somebody's freaking floorboards that you use to fix a bridge. You ever see a James Bond movie where he fixes a bridge? To start his mission? Anyway, saying Harvest Moon. I'm just saying I know how buyer's remorse feels. So every time, you know, somebody gives me a meager pittance, like, you know, $5,000. I go, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what, a bad day at the CEO factory, Elon? But if someone, no, if, if, you know, if someone gives an amount of money that seems significant, and that can vary, but... You know, I, the first thing I think of is like... Is this person going to regret this in the morning? I don't know. Hopefully not. Would I regret it in the morning? No, but I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't do it in the first place. I don't donate to streamers. I subscribe. And then, you know, you got to be really careful when you subscribe to a streamer as a streamer. Because subscribing to a streamer can never be undone without an awkward conversation. Now, you know, I, I owe subscriptions and more than subscriptions to my co-hosts, you know? There's no way in, on earth I would ever be like, well, Austin didn't shout me out, so I'm not going to renew my subscription. Well, Bear Taffy wasn't on the show much this month, so I'm not going to renew. No, like, I support their content, I watch their content, and we're, we're friends and colleagues, of course. People always, they hit me with the mathematical argument too. Like, like everything is like third grade arithmetic. Don't you realize you're just, if you subscribe to them and they subscribe to you, you're just giving money to Twitch? Yeah, but it's also like, it's a sign of, uh, you know, it's a sign that you enjoy their content and, you know, it's, it's also just a sign of friendship. Plus, you get those sweet emotes. Let me take it one further, you know? I've gifted subscriptions to Kate and. These people who have no idea what money laundering is. I know they're joking, for one. But they'll go like, money laundering, money laundering. It's not money laundering. It's money dirtying. I receive money from my job. I pay tax on it. I take my after-tax income, plug it into Twitch to give subscriptions to my wife. 
Twitch takes another cut. On top of the cut they took out of my income in the first half, my wife gets that income from Twitch six weeks later. She has to pay tax on it as well. You know, the $100 in gifted subscriptions is also like, uh, you know, we're paying tax on it 16 times. In the end, we get like a dollar. Twitch gets $14 and the Canadian government gets $85. These are made up numbers for the record. Why do I do it then? Because it makes my wife happy. You know, it makes... She's just going along with their stream and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, 10 gifted subscriptions in the chat. Then I wake up in the morning and she goes, what's this charge for 50 bucks for? And I go, oh, sorry, I was hammered last night and I buy you some gifted stuff. No, it never happened. But yeah, and, you know, beyond that, you know, 10 people are now subscribed. They're going to use those emotes and contribute to the community. Even if they don't resub, who cares? You know, they're making it a more hospitable and enjoyable environment. Not everything has to be specifically about the fiscal long tail. Terrible name for one of the ducks from DuckTales. He's the one who buys the stocks. Fiscal long tail. Mortgage rates and war bonds. Fiscal long tail. Hey, you be. He's filling the rest, postmodern jukebox, etc., etc. Anyway, we're getting into some real talk here, but I don't know. I straddle the line between a cynic and a uh, someone who's sensitive, I think. We have a key piece. We should keep going for this. And I, this is as real as I can get. When I, when I, let's say person X on Twitch gives me $100. The first thought that goes through my head is, is that person okay? Genuinely. First off, am I like, sweet, 100 bucks? Yeah, but that emotion registers at like a 5 out of 10. The concern and the nagging feeling in my stomach is like a, you know, it's like a 7.5. So it eclipses it by a little bit. When I see other streamers, not everybody, of course, and maybe not even the majority, but when they get a donation, and they're like, yo, thank you for the $100, and they sing, like, a song, and, uh, you know, they have, like, a, I don't know, like, a routine that comes in, and they seem, like, overly gracious to receive the donation. It also makes me wonder, are they being genuine? And if so, dude, teach me. Because I... I always have such a contextual thing about gifts where I'm like, when I receive a gift, it's like, you know, did I pressure them into giving them, giving me this? Uh, is this beyond their means? Uh, are they going to feel bad about this later? Did uh, Have I provided them with an ample amount of compensation in the opposite direction? You know, you get the idea. Like, I'm just neurotic. Like, what's it like to just be like a human being? <laughs> and, uh, you know, when somebody gives you... $100, you go, wow, thank you for the $100, that's amazing, thank you so much, this is going to help me out a great deal, thank you so much, I can't believe you're making my dreams come true, etc, etc. Because in my head, I'm always like, wow, this person's like, nakedly faking enthusiasm about the $100 to incentivize more donations. Now, I don't judge people that quickly, believe it or not, but it is in the back of my head. I don't know, I... It's just, uh... It's, it's complicated, you know, in any job where you rely, and I think about this all the time when I think about, like, PBS, for example. And I know that seems like a strange example to draw from, but, you know, PBS, NPR, etc., etc., uh, publicly funded, but also made possible with contributions from viewers like you. Has there ever been a period where, you know, PBS got a check in the mail for 500 bucks? Did they ever feel a pang of guilt? Did they ever think, like, uh... You know, maybe this person doesn't have the money to support PBS. Maybe they, you know, I don't know, maybe they just really like Masterpiece Theater but can't afford this and could continue watching it for free. I, You know what I mean? Like, do, is, does somebody do that or do they just go, hey, you know, everyone has to make the decisions for themselves. I don't know. Basically, what I'm saying is that there should be like a nanny state. <laughs> and... Uh, from each according to his means, and to each according to his... No. Um, I'm just... I'm, I'm bringing up stuff that, you know... This is the stuff I think about as a Twitch streamer. You know, I don't think about analytics very much. 
in this day and age. I just kind of show up every day and do my job. And, I, you know, I don't think too much about online toxicity, believe it or not. I wouldn't say I'm over it. You know, there's ebbs and flows. But I, I think about stuff like, you know, maintaining a healthy relationship with my audience. And, you know, I, I want to be entertaining. I work to be entertaining. I do. Sometimes I consume media. And as I'm consuming the media, I'm like, this is making me more literate as an entertainer. And that's just about the dumbest thing I've ever said, but I believe it, too. And sometimes when I'm, you know, on vacation, I'm like, these are going to make some great anecdotes for when I come back. I'm passionate about that stuff. But when I think about the job... You know, these are some of the things that come to mind. You know, how do I maintain a long-term healthy relationship with my audience where, you know, I'm not dependent on the audience that much and they're not dependent on me that much, except for the fact that, of course, you know, obviously I have to be dependent on you guys as well. How do you encourage a healthy level of engagement without, you know, getting yourself out of a job? <laughs> it's, a, it's a delicate balance. And I don't know if everybody thinks about it. I think... Very few people talk about it. I mean, I these are conversations I've had with other content creators that I have rapport with, and you know, in hushed tones, in corridors and alleyways. But it's I don't know. Without this is not meant to judge other streamers, because you know, when I say other streamers, most of the time I'm not thinking of anybody even specifically. I'm thinking of just kind of like a different part of the Twitch culture. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm much more interested in, like, working with a streamer who, you know, when you ask them about their job, you know, they're not like, yeah, Twitch Prime subscriptions are up 75% this month. They're like, yeah, you know, I work to have, like, you know, here's my philosophy for how I make content and interact with my audience and blah, blah, blah. People who show, like, a little bit of vulnerability and also, and also you know, forethought for that. And I think everybody in our group is like that. Nobody in our group talks about analytics. Bounties, yes, but I mean, come on. I mean, we're only human. All right, another good, easy-ish run. With cool tier effects. Kind of causing a little bit of monitor burn-in, so I'll try to figure this one out as soon as possible. Almost done here. It was a lot of fun. We've had three really good runs in a row. Hopefully I didn't ruffle any feathers on this one. If I did, I apologize. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash northernline. Give me your paycheck uh, there, and I'll see you next time. See ya!